friends, so today I'm going to work on the gimbal for my uh, crawler bot. So there's the crawler, and so let's talk about the gimbal. So I've got several iterations that I can finally throw away. Um, I prefer to do what's called iterative development, which means that I print things and then I test them and then I print them some more and I test them. So anyway, what I have in mind is to hang it off the front. And so as I have worked on this, I have improved it with various iterations. Uh, that iteration, the holes didn't print properly, so those go to recycle. Make sure, yep. Yeah. So this is the one that I think is the keeper. It's sure really close. Um, and so it goes in like this, but before it goes in, because it gets really hard to get it out of here once it's in, um, these servos get mounted to it. And pretty sure it's up, down, left, right. So I gotta take this apart in order to install it. And I've been told that you guys like my long form videos, so I'm not going to do any time lapse. So I have a bunch of screws that I bought. I should have another bucket of stuff here. Oh, there they are. So these are some nylon lock nuts that I already owned. So I think, well I think this part doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's fine. Those aren't going to be long enough. And that's a short one.
it this way. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to reverse this. And there's a method to my madness. So if I put them in the other direction, I don't have a way to grab these and keep them from spinning. I can't get a tool down inside there. This way, I can grab these with a pair of pliers. In theory, I should have a, a socket up here for these. Now there goes that one. Oh well, these are cheap. So let's figure out which of these it was. This looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks right. And then... Let me go find a socket. Okay, so it turns out that a... 7.30 seconds and a five and a half are probably about the same. Um, I believe these are metric. I don't really care, I just need to get them tightened. And this is probably overkill for what I'm building. But the problem with the other gimbal was it just wasn't strong enough. And I believe that by going with metal brackets, I can adjust some of the load off the servos. The servos really aren't designed to carry over a, a, any sizable load. They're designed for push-pull for the most part, and they're made with the absolute cheapest crap that they can find in Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, wherever they're making them this week. if the whole thing was made out of metal but you know this is kind of what it is all right so it looks like we're gonna be okay clearance wise I was a little bit worried about that um, so now we're gonna try and reattach the screws and see if this works. Mm-hmm. 
absolutely is. So the square side goes here and the other side goes on the other side. got more of this stuff in here. I think there's a whole other set of screws in there. Now, I don't think there's one there, but there is one here. A shorter screwdriver would be great, but this kind of is what it is. And this has sat for a couple months because quite honestly, this is hard on my hands. It makes them hurt. My left one's already starting to go numb um, just from this little bit of work. steel one because quite frankly I don't have very many of these little screws and I don't have a clue what size they actually are. thing we need to do is attach this. And to do that, we need the slidey one on this side. And the not slidey one over here. So I need to approximately center the servo. And then figure out which one it is. All right, so I got lucky, it's that one. a whole lot of precision here, but that's good enough. Gotta be 
देख रहे हैं I really was expecting this to just slide on. It's a much tighter fit than I would have expected. Well, it's crooked, that's why. This side should be this plastic screw. avoid that whole shenanigan by pre-assembling this side. See, that's what it should be like. It should just go together. And then this, yeah, so this one's got a good fit here. So we're gonna put a little thread lock on this just to, as insurance, because otherwise, sure as shit, that screw's gonna fall out. this one and see if we can figure out what the malfunction is. So more than likely, these are made by press fit. Something you should never do is just what you see me doing right now. Hammering on servers. But this servo is just not going to get a lot better anyway. And 
gonna I don't think this is a permanent I think this is a an iterative design all right so now that that is good this. And of course the simplest way to do it is to bend it. And then bend it back. definitely will want to use Loctite on this because yeah this is this shit's cheap and um, it ain't gonna stay together this is where about three sets of hands would come in handy three sets of hands, so I will make two. Don't freak out if it doesn't look level, it's not. Remember, this is the idler side. So the goal right now is just to get it attached. I had big problems with the gimbal getting damaged, so I am really going with a much beefier gimbal that can handle 20 kilos of load. I don't know if the plastic can, but the... the rest of this can. Now we're going to behave naughty. Dot, 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 dot. Hopefully we still have four screws left. Looks like we might actually have a extra screw, which means we're probably short. surprising they would put that many extra screws in that package but we'll see this is designed to be a bunch of different things to a bunch of different people so with luck they really did put three extra mounting screws in all right so let's have a moment of truth and see what it smells like stupid as we were last time 
with putting all four together before we actually fit them. such a better fit or bite. Yep, that will work. And these are cheap Chinese junk too, but I don't really care. These servos are probably made by slave labor in China, like everything else, but um, they're sold under a bunch of different names. And uh, so just look for 20 kilogram Metal Gear servos. All right, so now we gotta find the rest of the pieces. That's what's left of the camera from the last one. I bet this is all the crap that came with the LED lights. And that's exactly what that was. So I'm going to set it all to its death and recycling. I'm gonna, these have hoods and I'm gonna install them away from the uh, camera because I think it'll be plenty bright. And then this is just a press fit. It's actually really tight. And I'm not gonna push it all the way in famous last words. Yeah, I'm going to break it if I try and pull it out. So it's just, it's just going to sit in here. Now there's another one of these on my desk. I'm going to stop the camera and find it. It's not gonna be long. I wish it were, but it's not. So we're gonna have to go with these again. And you know, this is really the cost of building this yourself. Um, you know, there, there's some folks out there that sell these, but you know, they're not doing anything magical. In fact, most of them are using off-the-shelf parts for everything. There's one or two people who actually 3D print some of their stuff, but the bulk of them are just resellers, and they're selling model crap. And they're selling it for crazy amounts of money. And if you're one of those people, well, you know, whatever. Karma. I may eventually sell the gimbal assembly when I finish... Um, When I, when I finish uh, the development, I may sell these 3D printed parts because not everybody has a 3D printer. 
I have no intention of releasing my designs. Um, it goes against what little bit of engineering mindset I have. Again, I, I do have some ideas for a more complicated iteration of this. So the primary reason I have kept this the size that I have, why did I hang this off the front? Well, you know, I don't I don't really have issues with front clearance, but I do have issues with height. Because this is designed to go into places that I can't or don't want to go in. And uh, Houston has plenty of both. Sucks, kids. But it's the alternatives. some play in this. Um, I just wasn't expecting it to make it crooked. And at the end of the day, I mean, again, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter if it is or not because this is very, I mean this thing is going to go in and take pictures where people don't can't yeah and that's completely fucking wrong damn it uh, I put this on in the wrong orientation so we get to do it again up for 
or swing, not a, not a vertical. Next we're going to snug these up and then we'll true it and tighten it down. This is a square, and then we're going to crank it down. We're going to make it tight. I don't want to super crush it because it is plastic under there, and it is um, melted together. Now this is PLA, which is not the um, strongest of plastics, but I think for what I've done, it's probably strong enough. Yeah, that's that's going to be right. going to be right because I'm not going to take all this shit apart. Now, I thought I had a little bag. This is I know where it's going. It's going to recycle. So I'm apparently short a whole bunch of screws with a lock. These will fit. All right, they do. Now I need even shorter ones. Needless to say, I have three, maybe four. So I guess they intended for um, you to not use all four. It looks like it's set up for you to use a couple. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, honestly, two should be enough, but this is cheap Chinese shit. I'd rather have more than less. Thank you. 
so that the lights face away from the camera. If I find that that doesn't work, I can change it. If I need more lights, I'm going to install this light bar uh, there above or below. I haven't figured out. I mean, I could hot snot it there. So, that's that. So let's snap this on. That's kind of the key to this, is it's just designed to snap on like that. And yeah, it extends it six inches, but it gives me a very robust, this is a very robust gimbal that doesn't um, move. So we want to match black to black. And then we're going to match black to black again. That's a 270 degree. But I think, you know, that's going to give me enough. So next what I want to do is try to zip tie some of the madness, some of the madness out of this. Yeah, they're very difficult to see.
All right, yeah, I like that. I, I like that a lot. I think that's going to work. Now we've got those, so we're still going to zip tie this out of the way. And again, the goal here is overhead clearance. That's the number one goal. I actually thought about cutting this off, but I'm not quite ready to do that because I don't know. I don't know how strong that is. And give it a little bit more to get this out of the way. Because what can catch on shit underground will. So I had really hoped to use um, I got some extensions. Let me find those. Okay. So we're gonna wind up with a whole bunch more of this than we really wanted. shouldn't do, but we're going to do anyway. I think that's more than enough light for a GoPro camera. Oh, 
that's lovely. So, all that bullshit for just a flasher. Okay, well, whatever. So, let's put a camera in it and let's see what it can do. Wow, wouldn't you know it? This is upside down. Son of a bitch. So it's not supposed to be upside down like that. It should auto adjust. Well, the trial run wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. Uh, GoPro video quality sucks from about 10 feet away or better. So, back to the drawing board on that one. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found this interesting. I'm not sure I can recommend this experiment at this point, but stay tuned because I'm going to keep working on it.